This is a cheap life venture to Geneva in Switzerland. And here I am at Geneva Airport, and I'll go to the first lifts, which are some awesome Schindler Euro lifts. So you know that's Switzerland, you get good lifts. M series, Euro lift. So those are about, the little one's about one half metres a second. Well, now how fast the big one will be. Perfect intelligent landing. And now let's get on a double bendy trolley bus into Geneva. This bus is very long and very awesome. And here I am in Geneva. In the middle of Geneva, there's lots of places with both trams and trolley buses. And I find the cabling arrangements very interesting. Considering a trams just have a positive cable on a non-flexible pantograph that just goes straight up middle of a tram. Well, trolley buses have positive and negative cables, but the pantographs are actually flexible. And the trolley buses cables always to the side since the pantograph's flexible. They've actually had to arrange all these cables, get all the different vehicles where they need to go without ever there being a short circuit. And some sections of the junctions get very complicated. It's amazing how that actually done this. And now I go along to an epic Schindler S series with M series logic and full intelligent levelling. It's like Switzerland spoils you for good lifts. M series motor, M series logic, S series buttons. And let's get on top this lift so we can fully appreciate that precise, perfect deacceleration of Schindler M series intelligent levelling. Everything is in French. What? Oh, that doesn't look like a slightest bit of scent. Person standing up. What? Person lying down. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, I repuffed an old sign, that's why. And now I go along to an Otis 2000. Even if I notice this runs smoothly, everything in Switzerland runs very smoothly. But is the safety brake smooth? Let's find out. <gasps> Even the safety brake is smooth. No way. Now, in Switzerland, there's lots of drinking water fountains, which is very nice, especially since Switzerland is so bloody expensive. In some places, half a litre of bottled water it actually costs five francs, which is equivalent of four pounds. Four pounds for 500 mils of water, that's stupid. And the water fountains here, despite the fact that it appears that you're drinking the sick of a lion, the water is actually very good. The water is actually mineral water from the mountains and it's actually as good or even better than the bottled water in the shops. And now I go along to the next lift, which is a completely awesome, perfect, 
for the Lintergent Schindler M series. There are a lot of these heavy duty top of range Schindlers in Switzerland. They've got money to spend on their lifts. And this one is very nice, it's very efficient. And the floor numbering is quite interesting. It actually has two exit floors, depending on whether it's day or night. In the daytime you exit via the shop, in the nighttime you go straight to the street. Oh dear, that's a bit of security risk, especially since you could actually surf your way into the shop while it's closed at night. Hmm, they didn't really think of that, did they, when they installed this arrangement? But nevertheless, these lifts are completely awesome. Let's ride them! Very interesting. Insurgent, that's nice. You've got a night exit. Ground floor, Suso, which is basement, escape, what? Then you got all well, your car parks. I've never seen anything quite like this. Oh, this is so weird. And the lift opens this side, doesn't make any sense. Why is everything so well refined here? Everything works perfectly. Let's see what that floor is. Everything here is so smooth and nicely working. That's into shop. This place is so weird. And now go along to the main lifts in this shop, which are also some completely awesome perfect Schindler M series. These lifts have interesting floor numbering and go to lots of different floors. That is a lot of floors, let's go four. Oh. Very nice. Stop button. Oh no, it's just a fan. And a long ago to the next lifts, which are some Schindler Euro lifts. That's efficient, especially for a Euro lift. That's almost to M series efficiency. Is there a pre start? Yes, pre start. And along to an eco disc. And now I go along to the train station. And I now I go to a piece of shit lift. Oh dear. This lift's not that good. But compared to the other completely awesome lifts in Switzerland, it just makes this lift seem even worse. This is cheap. down there. Oh, this is actually the first lift so far without intelligent levelling. So it gives you an idea how good Switzerland is. This is the first lift I've been in without intelligent levelling. Let's take a look around the train station. There are some service lifts here which look very interesting, but sadly locked off. Tunnel and... Well, it's quirky to call it. 
and across to the other platform where there's an epic swing door lift. This lift looks really old and it's very awesome. And I managed to get in it and the door shut, but it refused to move unless you have a key. Oh, this lift looks so interesting and it refused to let me ride it. Ooh, scary. Lift going down. It's locked. Oh well. Oh, that's disappointing. Now long into a building and to some oldsies, which seem a bit pathetic compared to the Schindlers here. Oh, wait, actually, it all linked. All four are set. Ooh. This is cheap. So Switzerland does have some cheap lifts, just very rarely have cheap lifts. Well, minus three, RI, whatever that is, mezzanine, ground floor, done at RS's. And now go along to a shopping centre, and along to the lifts, which are some Otis's. Otis Mod Logic. Really, the Otis are Schindler here. AD, what the fuck's AD? Oh no, mod logic! Ugh. Let's safety break it. Otis mod logic safety! Ooh, Ooh that was quite harsh. First camera pointing at a lift I've seen so far in Switzerland. Most bits of Switzerland are very insecure. Well, Switzerland does security by social engineering. They have it so all of the citizens question you on every little thing you do. A little bit like Germany, but I think they sort of talk to you even more than Germany over here. But at night time when there's no residents about, it's pretty much very insecure here. And I'll now go to the next lift, which appears to be an associated lift services. It's under a different brand, but those are associated lift services buttons. This is their 80s model, and it's very nice. It even has fists and indicators, which associated lift services always use fists and indicators. So I actually think this is actually associated lift services under a different name for the Switzerland market. This is very interesting. Associated lift services buttons. Fitten indicator as brought out by associate, which associated lift services brought off Fitten. It's got Fitten Club logo. So this is quite an interesting lift. It's like Fitten Club sold their parts to associated lift services to other companies, by the way. What is this? And then now I go along to the next building, which has some very interesting lifts. It has three swing door lifts, two of them are passenger lifts, and one is a goods lift. First into the passenger lifts. These have been modernised with Schaefer fixtures into a German generic. I thought actually inside it's fairly bog standard German generic. But on the outside, they actually look pretty epic here. AS sensors. No alarm sounder. Surcharge. That's when they charge you to use the lift. So let's now go in the goods lift, which is much more interesting. It's much more original and looks very nice and very grotty. And it's got no inner doors. Yes! Yes. Oh, that's better. Oh, this is what I wanted. This is nice. Oh, yes, this is nice. Look at that floor. And safety test. Lift has stopped for safety purposes. Please wait a moment. Oh, forgot it's cool as well. Let's see, I'm doing it perfect. Ding, ding. Lift has stopped for safety purposes. Yes, yes perfect. Not perfect that time. Ding, ding. Lift 
has stopped for safety purposes. Please wait a moment. Dark floor. What's on the dark floor? Oh, it's also a dark floor. Basement 2. And it's all pre doors. That it has. And let's see what's on the creepy basements. I'm actually underneath one of the lifts at the moment. That is weird that you have lifts that don't come here. Creepy! There is no tram, bus or trolley bus here. Yeah, you've got a tram signal. Oh, it's for taxi. The tram signal is for a taxi. How weird. And now I go along into a little residential building and to the next lift, which is a very old lift. But sadly, the logic's been replaced, which ruins the atmosphere and character of this awesome old lift. I wonder what date this is from. 1920? 1930 maybe? Oh, very nice, but ruined. Very old, very, very posh. They clearly kept this because they like the poshness of it, which I like. I like it kept it because it's very nice, but oh, it'd be so much better if relay logic and original buttons. The VF drive does not suit this lift. The VF drive just feels out of place and wrong on this epic lift. Okay, intelligent levelling. A 1920s lift with intelligent levelling. Oh, what's that positioning system? That's not Schindler. I think it's modernised by generic. Now go along to the next lift, which is another associated lift services. This one is the 1990s model. Okay, two associated lift services in the same day. This is going really well. This is associated lift services in Switzerland or something. Yeah, associated lift services, but a 90s button and the other one had the 80s button. Then it was actually advertised that you can use your day ticket for public transport on some public boat services, but none of these appeared to be running when I went. That is so disappointing. So now I'll get on a tram. And the reason why I got on this tram is because this tram goes along to CERN. I didn't realise this, but Geneva is actually the location of the Large Hadron Collider. Shows I didn't research this very well before I went, but this was actually quite fascinating to actually visit it. And this is actually at the France border. So let's go and take a look at its border crossing. And you can see the old border crossings before Cheyenne came in. There's actually two of them for Switzerland and France. And they're completely deserted, not used at all. Everyone just drives through them. So then get back on the tram. go to a shopping centre and the first lift for going up to the shopping centre is a Schindler Euralift. And let's take a look around this shopping centre and along to the next lift which goes to in three floors but the top two floors are just 10 centimetres apart. That is very odd. What? Q-R-M-G. 
I went down like a decimeter. I went down 10 centimeters. Look at the one again. That was too weird. That moved such a tiny amount. It's hydraulics charging. 10 centimeter journey. Here you go, 10 centimeters. Oh, that was a lovely 10 centimeter journey. Best 10 centimeter journey I've ever had. So then I'll go across the bridge along to the car park lifts, which are some Schindler Euro lifts. Eco Club. What? Pre start. There are top of range models everywhere here. This is so weird. Every lift's top of range. I've got so much money in Switzerland. And watch this epic pre start. Well, listen to the pre start. Yeah, VF's definitely started. It's like semi pre-start, a VF starts but a brake doesn't release till the door's fully shut. How weird, why did a VF start but a brake doesn't release because it usually does it on the pre-door relay. So it is actually authorised to lift the brake as long as it doesn't move out of the door zone, it is actually within safety. But this one doesn't lift the brake on pre-start, it only starts the VF. And I'll go to some Otis lifts. These ones actually sound really good, they actually sound like classic Otis 2000 VFs. This is next stop in English, that one is next stop in French. And now I go on a very modern bendy trolley bus. This bus looks very awesome. Thank <laughs> you. 